Hello, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to Craft World. Today I've got a video for you using Creative Stamping issue 121. Now this one is very much wild, a uh, safari theme. Um, absolutely beautiful products with this one. We've got the A6 leopard print embossing folder. We've got a huge A4 stamp set as well with giraffe, zebras, lions, elephants, a gorgeous tree silhouettes, um, even background patterns such as leopard print here as well. I love this. I think there's so much you can do. When you look closely, you've even got um, leaf prints here, leaf stamps that you could use totally away from the safari theme. Use them with all of your other florals. So a really useful set and some really lovely sentiments here as well. So I'm going to be focusing on the stamp set today. I'm going to create a very, very quick card. Um, it's going to be a small card. I'm going to experiment with just creating a sunset background um, and yeah, see, let's see how we get on. So I'm starting with my plastic bag that I got from around the magazine and I've popped that down onto just a piece of white cardstock so I can see what I'm doing because uh, this is going to act as almost like a blending mat, a protection for my mat as such. So I'm going to use that. Now I've got myself my piece of uh, watercolour cardstock but I'm not going to use loads of water on this because I know that this isn't the best quality watercolour. Um, so I'm just going to maybe add a little bit of water in a bit. So I'm going to actually do some streaks. Um, so as a sort of sunset um, effect would actually be hor hor horizontal, like a horizon um, lines. So I'm just going to do that. So I started with the yellow. I'm now going to go in with an orange. Then I'm going to go in with a pink that's quite bright. And then I'm going to go in with, let's just turn that over like so. And I'm going to go in with the purple like so. Okay, I might need to just do orange again because there's quite a, quite a strong line there. So I've got those streaks at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is just take a small amount of water, not a lot, and just do a light mist over the surface and that's just going to start making all of that lovely juicy ink just start to react and because I don't want to saturate this watercolour paper I don't trust that it's going to be best quality so now I'm going to swipe again take off the excess before it soaks in too much that's also blended some of those lovely colours together so I've not got a complete blend you can still see the texture in the paper that's absolutely fine but it's a nice background for me to start stamping my silhouettes onto now you can see the the curling that we've got going on here and that's because I've added some water to it so I would allow that to either air dry or heat dry and then pop that under something heavy while it cools down after it dries off uh, or between a couple of um, pieces of kitchen towel something like that tissue absorbent tissue uh, while it dries and then um, and something heavy as well and then hopefully that will flatten out for you if it really won't flatten out spritz the back side with um, or the reverse here with a light mist of water as well and then again leave it and that should help expand the fibers on the back and then everything will be even again so now I've got my background, it's almost dry, I mean it's not, it's not too wet, it's not too damp, I can carry on stamping onto that. I'm just going to take a black ink and I am going to bring in my stamping platform. Now again, this panel is larger than my card base, so I'm not sure yet which areas I'm going to use. In fact, let's just do a little technique first of all, and let's add in... Uh, a sun so I've got a little bit of water spritzed on my mat and I've just got myself a round uh, lid and it comes I think it's off an embossing powder I'm going to just dip my lid into my water not too much on there and pop that into my ink and turn it to make sure that water's spread around the entire circle and lift off and then do it again to try and make sure I put it in the same place. Now what happens when water hits uh, distress ink is it kind of has almost a, a bleaching effect. It pulls the colour out and tones it right down. So that's hopefully what I'm looking at here underneath. But it is a slow process. It does take a little while 
to react and to happen. So I'm just going to leave that as it is, as it's wet. It may work, it may not. The paper I've chosen isn't playing ball today, so we'll go with it. We'll just leave that sort of circle of water sitting there. Um, we'll come back later and see whether or not it's actually done anything. It's fine if it hasn't, I haven't lost anything at all. If it does, great, we shall see. So let's get stamping. These trees are beautiful, so let's do these trees. And I'm going to go with three trees, I think, because I can't do just just two or four. It needs to be an odd number. Uh, yeah, an odd number. Um, and I think I'm going to go. I'm going to do something like that. I'm just placing first of all, and then I'll have this big one over here as well. So. I'm going to do some overlapping. And like, like so, yeah, happy with that. So let's just pick these up. I can remove, I don't need my plastic under there now. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think that water is, there is going to work on this, in this instance. I think the paper, has really is really holding on to the ink there but try it with different materials some papers work better than others I find it from the smooth cardstock that's not actually made for holding wet mediums is often better than uh, a watercolor cardstock for that technique Look, they're gorgeous aren't they absolutely beautiful trees I'm just going to do another layer I want these really nice and dark solid color And what I've done with this video is a little bit different. Rather than showing you how to get the perfect result, I'm actually showing you um, mistakes and things as well because I think it's important to know that um, when you're crafting, not everything goes right all the time and uh, sometimes we have to sort of fix things in various ways. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this is helpful for some of you to realise that we're not, you know, we're not always getting perfect results. And if you do have mistakes and things like this, things like your ink going on your stamping platform, you know, it happens. It's absolutely fine. It happens to everyone. Right, so just moving that because my stamp was going onto, um, onto the edge here that I wouldn't be able to use it. And then just stamp this one again, probably twice again, to make the most of that nice solid silhouette. You know what? I don't. I will do it once more, but I don't think it needs it. It's a pretty good impression that one. There we go. Beautiful, lovely. Now, something else I am going to need is a sentiment. That sun area isn't. That's not worked, has it? So we gave it a chance, but definitely try it. Try it on other, um, on other mediums, other materials as such and see if it works for you so let's take a look at this life is either a daring adventure or nothing that's so true wild about you wild about you i like that one be strong and courageous big love see the world on safari um i think i like wild about you i think that may be the way to go so let's just take Can sit in there can't it and that actually sits in that gap you can see I've got the three trees and the gap about a third of the way along it's working with the the rule of threes um, I think that's yeah I think that's going to be the one so let's pop that down and again I'm going to use the black and I'm probably going to do a couple of impressions of this particularly while the stamps new as well you always find stamps work better the more they're used brilliant lovely okay so now I've got that I'll clean my stamps up that side as I said I have actually got made this much larger or a little bit larger than I want it to be so I've now got 
room to cut down. Now I could actually almost trim that down and just put that directly on the card with no border, but I do like a white border around the card. So I'm going to trim the bottom because I want the base of the trees to be at the base of the card. There we go. Let's see how we're doing. That's actually really good. Now I'm going to take a little bit off this end. I want that world about you to be a third of the way along the card. It's about right. So I just I'm just going to do a little fold where I want to do where I need to do my other cut line. So it's just that side of the trunk there. See this way I can trim it down depending on where the stamping went well. There we go. Yeah, brilliant, that fits. So I'm just going to adhere that just with some glue. Let's just take some wet glue. This is still a little damp. Go. I really like that. So this card has been made using the stamps from issue 121 of Creative Stamping, which also comes with an A6 letter print embossing folder, which we haven't even used yet or touched on. Maybe look out for another video playing with that. But I think there's a fun little card that you can do with minimal tools and materials if you want to. Nice and simple. Um, definitely check the quality of your watercolour card so it does make a difference but as you can see it still doesn't look bad so I quite like the texture that we've got um, where that that ink didn't spread and blend the, the sun uh, effect didn't work but honestly try that on a smooth cardstock rather than a watercolour very often that will lift out an area and you have a circle of white there which would represent the sun as well so lots of techniques for you to go away and play with and try and i'd love to see how you get on by posting your makes and your comments in the inspiration gallery